What's up, Action Tribe? AJ here, host and founder of My Seven Chakras, the show where we provide you ancient wisdom, inspiring stories, and action steps that will help you transform your life. So if you are new to our show, then I want to give you a warm, warm welcome and know that you are in the right place because I believe that you have been divinely guided over here. Now, before we actually begin today's episode, I've got a quick message for you. If you are interested in working on your chakras and clearing the energy blockages that are holding you back from your desired life, then join me this Thursday for an online chakra training. I'm actually going to show you how small energy blockages in your body can lead to illness and discomfort and disease and what you can do about it. I'm also going to teach you how to balance your root chakra for greater flow and greater abundance and you will discover how to activate your life force energy in your palms which is a fun fun activity so join me www.my7chakras.com forward slash live training that's my seven chakras seven is a word my seven chakras.com forward slash live training all right so let's welcome our special guest for today, Anthony Corajas. Anthony, are you ready to inspire? Absolutely. Thank you, AJ. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So Action Tribe, Anthony Corajas healed himself of clinical depression, low back pain, anxiety, chronic fatigue using the ancient Chinese healing art of Qigong. And since then, he has helped thousands of people all over the world to use Qigong for their own stubborn health issues. And there are numerous solutions. He is the director of Flowing Zen with over 20 certified instructors. And he's also, get this, he's on the board of directors of the National Qigong Association. Action Tribe, you might want to listen to this episode till the very end. And here's why we're going to talk about how Anthony overcame different challenges like depression using Qigong. You will learn what healing really is, and we will uncover the big benefits of Qigong and why it doesn't take months or even years to see, to see results. You can feel a difference in most cases almost immediately. So are you ready? Let's get started. Uh, so Anthony, to begin with, what is your favorite inspirational quote and how do you apply that in your day-to-day -day life? Uh, lots of choices, but I think we'll just go with good old Aristotle. Uh, this is what I deal with a lot, which is that excellence is not an act, it's a, it's a habit. Uh, mm. And I think that this is what you were sort of talking about in terms of these action steps, in terms of getting people to practice. So obviously my my topic is qigong and you think okay well you just teach qigong and that's enough but it's not most of what i do or a large part of what i do is inspire people to to take action to make habit changes in their life it's one thing to learn qigong or tai chi or similar arts but how do you implement it on a daily basis so that's why i love that aristotle quote Wonderful, wonderful. So Action Tribe, if you're watching, remember there's a difference between learning something and actually implementing and applying it. And Qigong is not just about activating your Qi and then forgetting about it, but it's about <laughs> activating it and cultivating it. And that's the key word. And that is so profound. Thanks a lot for sharing that with us, Anthony. So uh, let's start from the very beginning. What were you doing uh, uh, at the beginning, like you said, that Qigong saved your life, right? So how so? Yeah, that's that's a statement that confuses people once they hear my story. So stick with it a little bit, because if you know a little bit about me already, you already mentioned it, that I healed myself of depression. Uh, what a lot of people don't realize is that depression is deadly. They don't realize how many people are dying from depression. And I was in a very dangerous zone at the time. I was in my mid-20s. And I was at a very, um, I was at, in college with a lot of pressure. There was a lot of factors there that put me in at high risk for, you know, death from, from depression. So I want you to understand as you listen to this, that I'm not, I'm not uh, being uh, glib or just trying, it's not, I'm not trivializing things by saying that it saved my life. I really was at risk. Uh, depression is a number two killer for that age group. And Qigong was the thing that did it for me. So my story was I was uh, I was exiting college. I had just finished with college. I was probably already depressive, but it wasn't something that we talked about back then. This was back in the 1990s and depression was still kind. Even today, there's still a stigma, but especially back then, 
We didn't talk about it. I didn't want to admit that I had depression, but my life was just going down and down and down. And it had previously been good. I had a you know very promising future. I was very successful in college and with music, which was how I was raised. My parents are musicians, but something was starting to change after college. And I was falling into this abyss of depression, anxiety, really high anxiety, including some panic attacks, uh, chronic fatigue. I was just exhausted. I couldn't do the things that I was used to doing at the time. I was very interested in karate and then also low back pain, severe low back pain. And uh, actually, I think low back pain is what saved my life. It's interesting. Uh, Mm -hmm. The low back pain is what I started looking for solutions to not the depression because I didn't want to admit that I was depressed. I don't oh, think anybody right. does. So the back pain, I was practicing karate at the time. I was very gung ho about karate, but I couldn't practice because my back was killing me. Mm. And so I started looking for solutions to my back pain and thank God I did because that is what ultimately led me to find, find Qigong really. Got it. So, so, sort of take us back in time. You said it. you were a student, right? What were some of the factors or circumstances that were creating that sense of depression within you? Because you said you, that you were into music, you were into karate, but give us a, an idea over here. What were some of the circumstances or maybe factors that were creating that state of depression within you? Well, like all things, I, I think it's a combination of nurture and nature. So I think that it's likely that I have a predisposition for depression. It, I think it runs in my family. Uh, and then there's external factors as well. You know, the, the college I went to was just very high pressure. And mm. um, I, I went to Columbia, New York. And there's some research also that, you know, with these high pressure schools, uh, the incidence in depression is twice as sorry. Uh, depression and suicide is twice as bad. So there was the pressure from school. There was pressure from growing up. There was pressure from, I don't know, maybe not eating right. There were so many thing, factors. I, I don't think people can so easily say de- depression is caused by this or that. I think depression is an epidemic worldwide. There's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. But I think it's not just, it's a chemical thing for sure. And me, it was definitely chemical, but it's more than that. I think it's also a spiritual thing. It's an energetic thing. It's a life thing. It's a, it's one of these big challenges. It's it, for me, it was a dragon that I had to slay um, Mm -hmm. or maybe continually slay my life, but I don't know exactly what caused it, um, but I know what fixed it. And that was Qigong. Got it. Okay. So you had certain challenges. You were going through depression. You had that lower back pain uh, that was hurting you. So you were on this quest to find something that could potentially heal you. How did you discover Qigong? What's that story like? Yeah. So for me, I'm a, I'm a bookworm and I love books. I studied literature in college. I've always been a reader and I still am. And so my natural solution was to go to the bookstore. And uh, at the time in New York City, which is where I was living, we had these beautiful big bookstores and I would just go in there and go to typically the martial arts aisle uh, because that's what I was interested in. And I was actually originally looking at Tai Chi. So <laughs> it's, it was natural because in New York City at the time, we would see people practicing Tai Chi in the morning, you know, these slow motion movements. We didn't really know much about it, but we would see the Chinese community practicing in the more early in the morning. And I had this idea in my head that Tai Chi was healthy. So I started looking in Chi, sorry, in Tai Chi books. At the time I had never heard of Qigong, literally mm. never heard of the word. So I'm reading these books on Tai Chi. You know, Tai Chi is basically a martial art or originally was a martial art. And I'm reading this bo- these books, but I'm still in love with karate. I'm a black belt in karate at the time. I'm still in love with it. I'm not really that interested in switching martial arts. Mm -hmm. And as I'm reading these books on Tai Chi, they keep mentioning this thing called Qigong. I didn't know how to pronounce Mm -hmm. it at the time either. There's a few different spellings. I didn't know how to pronounce it. And it kept coming up in the books. It kept coming up, kept coming up. So I kept looking for more books. And then I started looking for books on Qigong. And I remember very clearly there was this one Tai Chi book that told this story of a monk named Bodhidharma, Damo, and he arrived at a Buddhist temple in China from India. Actually, he was Indian. He was an Indian monk. He arrived from India at a temple in China. And he found that the monks were meditating, but they were sick and they were weak and they were un- unhealthy. And so he taught them a series of exercises, which are, we would now call Qigong. And you know, this totally transformed the monks. It not only increased, increased their health, 
but it improved their spiritual cultivation as well. And I don't know, something about this story just resonated with me. And I thought, you know, that's what I want. I want whatever that that is, I want it. And it's funny because I didn't realize this until about 10, 10 years later. But um, now, because of all my training and the teachers I've studied with, I actually have a direct lineage back to that monk. I actually studied uh. the... It was somewhat coincidental that I studied the type of Qigong that, you know, it's this 1500 years later. We don't know exactly, but as far as we can tell, the Qigong that I practice is in the lineage of what this monk Bodhidharma taught. So it's really, it was really sort of cosmic coincidence there. I'm very, I think that's pretty interesting. Cosmic coincidence, divine timing. And these are some of the topics that we're speaking about today because it is no coincidence that you're watching this stream right now. You were meant to watch it and I am simply enjoying it. Uh, Anthony, you've spoken about being in a library and if anyone's watching this right now, I'm sure they would agree that when you go into a library, I love going into a library. You know, it's just that sense of smell that draws mm -hmm. me in and I get lost. I can spend hours in the library, maybe just sitting, exposing myself to different fields, right? Especially those that are adjacent to topics that I'm really interested in. And it's so mystical that you went in to learn a little bit about Tai Chi, but then you discovered Qigong and then you went and you had that background of uh, karate because you were a black belt. So I think the world is so interconnected and then one thing leads to another and then you end up there. So talk to us about Qigong now. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sure people are fascinated. They're curious. Uh, what is Qigong and okay. why is it so effective? <laughs> yeah. So if I had to describe it quickly, so Qigong is the ancient Chinese art of self-healing. It's really the grandmother of Tai Chi. It's much, much older than Tai Chi. Right. And you can cultivate in many different directions. It's like you said earlier, it's, the, it's an art of cultivation and specifically the art of cultivating internal energy. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can cultivate in a few different directions. There are three main directions. One is for health and healing. Two is for martial arts. And three is for spirituality. But they're not just distinct paths. The, the thing with Qigong is that they overlap a lot. So a lot of the Qigong you will learn will overlap. So you might be learning some, uh, some healing or medical Qigong, what we call it. But, you know, you might also learn some spiritual Qigong, which also helps push you through your blockages. So what it is in terms of the nitty gritty is um, a con it's really a lot of different things. But very simply, they are typically we would start with dynamic standing exercises which can also be done seated but typically they're 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 done standing they involve very gentle movement breathing and meditation in specific ways and when you get all the pieces together there's many different movements but the movements are a bit of a a red herring or, or, or a, a mistake that people chase it's not just the movements you have to have all of the pieces together with qigong to get the results that you need so when you do the movements the breathing the meditative aspects and you do these correctly and consistently under a, a, a specific method, then that's when you get all these amazing results. Uh, most typically, and this is what I teach mainly is in health and vitality, but also I spent many time, many years practicing Qigong for martial arts so that improves your speed, your power, your internal strength. And uh, the older I get, the more interested I am in spiritual Qigong and, uh, opening my heart, opening my energy, opening my mind and connecting with something that's larger than all of us. Wonderful, wonderful. So viewers, when you see somebody doing these wonderful Qigong moves, these slow and beautiful moves, remember that what's going on inside is not just the moves, but it's movement breathing coordinated breathing. And of course, meditation, awareness. And once you practice it, you get more and more, uh, better at it or more uh, skilled at it. And that's the beauty of it. It is a cultivation, not yeah. just a one time activity. So uh, uh, Anthony, you mentioned that you went in search of certain teachers, right, or masters, mm -hmm. or mentors that could potentially teach you Qigong. Who, you, you, where did you go first? And how did you find out about that first person? Actually, I just started looking in New York City, you know, it's a mecca of martial yeah. arts and Qigong and Tai Chi. I went to parks, I went to a few schools in New York. And I don't know, I, I think it's really important to find um, teachers that resonate with you. And I, I, although I learned a little bit, I just didn't find what I was looking for. And eventually, um, 
you know, zoom ahead a little in the story, I ended up flying to San Francisco and met a, an Asian teacher there. And then uh, not long after that, I ended up traveling to Asia to learn from him, some other masters. And then over the years, I've actually learned from maybe, I would say, I mean, dozens of different teachers, but I would say a half dozen masters that I've really buckled down and done the work of what they teach. And I spent 17 years as, a, as an inner chamber disciple of one particular master. Um, so yeah, I, I went on a I literally went on a long search, not just in my city, but globally. I traveled all around the world to learn what I needed to learn to heal myself and to cultivate in the way that I wanted to cultivate. Wow. And truly, we are talking about the word global over here. We've got, uh, you know, viewers from uh, Luxembourg. We've yeah. got uh, Addy from Thailand. We've got Laura Miller, who's actually a student from Wyoming. Uh, yeah. We've got Yvonne from Modesto, California. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Uh, Anthony, talk to us about So for initially, you found teachers in the US, right? New York, you went to California, and then you stepped out to Asia. Was mm -hmm. that your first time? And where did that yeah. uh, sort of quest take you? Yeah, that was. Hey, guys, I recognize a few of those names. I know a couple of my students are in here. Hi, guys. So my, I was just kind of, um, I don't know, I think desperation brings something with it. I had yeah. traveled before, but I had never been to someplace like Asia. And when I look back, it's kind of crazy what I did. I was still struggling with depression, although at the time I was climbing out of my depression thanks to uh, Qigong mm -hmm. but I set this goal to travel to Asia to learn from this teacher and I just sort of did it I didn't know what I was doing I I bought a ticket I flew to Malaysia I went to meet this teacher I spent a couple weeks there uh, it was in retrospect it was kind of crazy that I would especially in this day of the internet you know back then the internet was very new right. and uh, you know I, I had it wasn't really an option to learn online. So um, I I just sort of did it. I don't know where this strength came from. <laughs> yeah. I just, I think it was a determination to, to level up, to get out of the, I mean, for, for people who don't understand how painful depression can be, yeah. that kind of negative motivation can be very powerful. Some people will say, oh, you shouldn't use negative motivations. But for me and some of my students, negative, for example, depression is, even now, even after all these years of managing it so well, um, it's a kick in my ass. It reminds me anytime I get lazy or, or, you know, I do get lazy. People think that, oh, you're, you've been doing this so long, you practice every day. And I typically do, but sometimes I get a little lazy and a, a little reminder of my depression lights a fire and reminds me to practice. That's kind of what happened my, with my original trip to, to Asia. I just, it was almost life and death for me. I mean, it was, but at this point I was sort of out of the danger zone, but I knew that if I didn't do something, um, let's say something crazy, if I didn't shake things up, that I might go back down that, that dark path and I was determined not to go back there. Got it, got it. So for those who are watching right now, please make sure that you share this post, that you give us a like, because we want to spread this important information as far and wide as possible to share, share, share. And Anthony, you mentioned something so important, so profound, uh, is that, you know, when we change, like Anthony Robbins, same name, <laughs> reminded us, yeah. we change because of two reasons. One is either inspiration or desperation. And usually the second is a more uh, powerful motivational factor that, you know, forces us to, to, to go beyond our comfort zone, especially when we have our back against the wall. It forces us to transform, to change for the better. And you, the second thing you, uh, you mentioned, and I realized that Qigong is not just about recognizing the light, right? It's not just about focusing on the good, but also recognizing the darkness, right? You mm -hmm. have the yin and the yang, and to acknowledge areas that need focus, that need attention, that need your mindfulness, right? Yeah, for sure. Totally yeah. agree. Yeah, everything is yin and yang, but that's that's definitely part of my journey is that there was an acceptance of, first of all, an acceptance of my depression. Like I am right. depressive. This is a problem. This is dangerous. And the light, I would say, it, which is there's something I can do about it, which is really kind of, it's like, kind of like what the Buddha taught. It's kind of like, well, life mm -hmm. is suffering. Life kind of sucks. There's all this pain and suffering. But, you know, there's this other side, and here's the stuff that we can do to transmute that. 
Wonderful. That's 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 a powerful philosophy. So thanks a lot for bringing that to our attention. Could you give us an overview now of Chinese medicine and how does Qigong sort of factor into it or fit into it? Yeah. So Chinese medicine as as an entity is a huge thing. It traces back thousands and thousands of years. Right. And it has many different branches. So the most popular branch that most of us have heard of, at least in the West, I think, is acupuncture. Uh, and then closely related to that is Chinese herbology, which, you know, those often go hand in hand. In the past, they were, they were actually separate. Today, most acupuncturists also practice herbology. Uh, but in the past, that wasn't always the case. You would go to an herbologist or you might go to an acupuncturist. There are other branches like Chinese massage, which is Tui Na, uh, even other branches. But what most people still don't know is that Qigong is one of the branches. So Qigong is like an entire branch of Chinese medicine. And um, this is well recognized in the world of Chinese medicine. So for example, I went to acupuncture college and at acupuncture college, they, you know, they teach Qigong, they recognize the importance of it. And actually later, a lot of my early students came from my um, classmates and my professors at acupuncture college referring their patients to me because they right. recognized that the Qigong that I taught was so good and they all recommend Qigong for their patients. And the difference with Qigong and what I love about Qigong is that it is self-healing. So it empowers you, it's medicine, but empowers you to work on yourself. And what I tell people, and this is, this is really true, this is held out to be true in my years and years of teaching thousands of people from all over the world. So with Qigong, if you learn and practice with even just one year of training, now you can do less, but let's just say one year. In the grand scheme of things, one year of training in any art is not a big deal. Let's say one year of very casual training, practicing about 15 minutes a day, mm -hmm. you can learn to be as powerful a healer on yourself only as people who spend years and years and years and many more hours going to medical school or becoming healers or doing other things in order to heal somebody else. That is an incredible thing. One year of kind of lazy, casual training can turn you into a powerful self-healer where you can really make amazing, consistent changes in your own life. That is amazing. And that's where Qigong shines is that it is, um, there are branches of Qigong that can work on healing somebody else. But what I love and what I focus on are the self-healing uh, aspects of Qigong that can help you, empower you to start participating in your own healing. So if you get acupuncture or you get some other type of healing that works for you, great. Add Qigong and you and your physician or your doctor will be super happy because you'll be participating and magnifying the results of whatever you're already doing. Wow. So Action Tribe, I hope you are watching, you're listening, you're taking notes and noting down what Anthony just mentioned, which is the fact and the truth that your body has an inner healer, right? So you're not depending on something external, right? You can use them in conjunction, herbs or some other treatment that you're having, acupuncture and stuff like that. But the, at the end of the day, if you do Qigong, if you practice these moves, maybe on a daily basis for a short period of time, your body will remember the inner blueprint that you already have and will start restoring and rebalancing and, and, and bringing you to that peak state that you deserve to be in. So Anthony, is Qigong practiced the same way in China as it is in the West? How does well, it differ if it does? Well, yes and no. But what people forget about China, everybody thinks, oh, let's, um, let's go to China to learn Qigong. Right. Uh, people forget about the Cultural Revolution. It wasn't that long ago in the 1960s. Yeah. And the, the Cultural Revolution was awful. And they, you know, they killed everybody who was an authority figure in intellectual arts, traditional arts, pseudo-religious arts, healing arts, martial right. arts. They either if they didn't kill them, they persecuted them, sent them to camps. And all the masters in China went into hiding. Okay. And although there are more masters coming out and teaching in China, you have to remember that a lot of them fled China. They went to places like Hong Kong. They went to California. They went to Southeast Asia. And this actually happened a few times in Chinese history where mm. the traditional masters fled. So it's a mistake, a big mistake, to think that China is still the source. In fact, what very often happens is, like I myself have brought qigong back to asia so i have asian students who tell me that they can't like for example in singapore they tell me that they can't learn qigong the way that i teach it because i teach it very openly and right. no nonsense in a modern way so uh, you you know you have to recognize that 
there are pockets of masters throughout the world. And my generation of students, we had to go and we had to become disciples of these masters. I had to go through the, the traditional craziness of becoming a disciple. I had to learn from them for many, many years. Uh, those things have changed. Now Qigong is global. It's all over the world. My students, for example, in some of my online, my current online class, I have students from 38 countries. And there's a reason why they're coming to me. It's because they haven't found a teacher nearby or even in their travels that they resonate with. Now with the internet, we can do that. We can learn from teachers all over the world. Of course, find out where your teachers learn from, find out if they're good at what they do. But for example, students, somebody just asked me last week, I wanna to go to China to learn Qigong. And it's maddening to me. It's like, you will spend months and months searching in China to find a good teacher. You probably won't find one. You'll spend thousands and thousands of dollars in the, in the pursuit. And if you do get lucky enough, like let's say you luck out, you win the lottery and you find this good teacher, it's gonna be miserable. A traditional Chinese teacher is gonna make you miserable in the process of learning because the traditional way in China is to test you out for one year, two years, maybe three years before really teaching you the good stuff. And I'm not Chinese, I went through a lot of that stuff, but what I do is I just give you the good stuff right up front because I have a different philosophy. My philosophy is Qigong saved my life. Maybe you need it to save your life. So you're gonna need the good stuff as soon as possible. Right, so I teach it right, really right from the beginning. Even a lot of my free materials, I teach stuff that was that used to be uh, really a well-guarded secret in the Qigong world. Right. What comes to my mind is Doctor Strange. If you remember that scene <laughs> where he's yes. trying to get that wisdom right, and he doesn't get it immediately, he has to he has to fight for it. He has to have that patience and that determination. Uh, but yeah, now there are twelve primary meridians in Chinese medicine, right? So firstly, what are meridians and what's their significance in all of this? Yeah, so this is connects us back to Chinese medicine, acupuncture. I think we all know deals with these meridians and these points. So the traditional mm -hmm. way of talking about them, which I think is really still relevant, um, is of like rivers and seas of energy through the body. Now remember, this is back before they had the idea of wires or electricity or anything like that. So, but we can, whichever way you want to look at it, they're not actual wires. You can't cut open the body and see the wires, but there are these rivers of energy through the body. Right. Traditionally, there are 12 primary meridians, um, each one associated with an organ. And okay. then th there are eight secondary meridians. And then there are actually even more, there's sort of correlation. But what these past masters, and this is the genius of it, who knows how they figure this out, but similar to the chakra theory, which is of course Indian, but how did they figure out these, um, these chakras? And I think it's the nadis, these little cha channels in the Indian tradition, but how did these past masters figure it out? I don't know, but it's ingenious and it's still useful today, both as a metaphor and a literal um, tracing of the channels, the pathways of energy flow through the body. Got it, got it. Well, thanks a lot for sharing. And it blows my mind all the time to sort of even think about how these people went about mapping these nadis and these meridians without technology, without these advanced systems that were uh, available without technology, just using the power of, I guess, focus and meditation, contemplation, documentation, whatever that might be, but they did it and we benefit from that wisdom. Now, let me ask you a question that I'm sure is in, on everyone's mind right now, but how exactly does Qigong help reduce stress? Because that's something everyone's going through, stress, anxiety, maybe depression as well. So how does mm -hmm. Qigong help reduce stress? So everybody wants to reduce stress and I don't know, the term has become almost meaningless. It's like yeah. people don't even understand what that means. And this, uh, this description in a modern way may help. So what people need to understand is the basic yin and yang of their nervous system. Your central nervous system has two basic states. It's more complicated than this, but I'm simplifying. You have two basic states. One you're very familiar with, which is the fight or flight mode. And the other mode, which is people, what people don't know as much is the rest, relax, and restore, uh, restore mode. So fight or flight is your sympathetic nervous system. And the rest and restore mode is your parasympathetic. The easy way to remember that is stressful, sympathetic, peaceful, parasympathetic. So 
we are designed to flow back and forth between sympathetic and parasympathetic. That's natural. There should be a flow back and forth. One is not better than the other. We should mm -hmm. be flowing back and forth. So let's say thousands of years ago, you're being chased by a saber toothed tiger. That is the time for your sympathetic nervous system to engage. You need all of the energy in the muscles so that you can run and escape from the tiger. Mm -hmm. And where, where you don't need energy, for example, is digestion. That's not important when you're running away from a tiger. You don't right. need en energy in cellular repair or things like this. Like all these other systems in the body no longer need, they temporarily do sure. not need energy when you're escaping the tiger. Uh, but what's supposed to happen and does not happen in our modern lives is that once you've escaped the tiger, whew, that was a close one, and you're supposed to shift back into the parasympathetic or rest and restore mode. Most of us don't do that. So when it comes to chronic healing, there's actually a very good explanation for why we are not healing and why all this stress is creeping up constantly on us. We are stressed out and stuck in what they call a, a sort of a constant low grade state of fight or flight mode. A bill comes in the mail and mm -hmm. you look at it and you get stressed out. That is a modern tiger. Uh, you have a fight with your spouse or your boss at work. These little things engage the sympathetic nervous system and we no longer know how to shift back into the parasympathetic. So it's no wonder you're not healing or it's no wonder you're not feeling a reduction in your stress. That's because your system is actually designed that way. You're stuck in fight or flight mode. Your body thinks you're still running from a tiger. So what Qigong does and other, many other arts as well, but I think Qigong really, it hits the spot for many of us. It teaches us to regulate our nervous system, to go from the sympathetic into the parasympathetic, from the fight or flight and ease our way back into the parasympathetic. Parasympathetic, the rest, restore, and relax mode does not mean inaction. It, it can mean that, it mean resting, but you can do Qigong, you can do these movements, these beautiful movements and breathe, standing up even, moving around. You can do them in a parasympathetic state, relaxing your nerv nervous system and not just reducing your stress, which is what everybody thinks, but you're actually responding to your stress. Re the reason why I don't like the word reducing stress is because forget about reducing the stuff from out there. That doesn't work. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe, maybe a little bit, but for the most part, if you're alive in the 21st century, stress is going to hit you. What we need to reduce or, right. or, or adjust is our reaction to stress and our ability to regulate our nervous system. And I think that that's one of the most beautiful things about Qigong is that it's really a practical modern way to regulate your nervous, your nervous system. Wonderful, wonderful. So Action Drive viewers, watchers, if you are watching right now, make sure that you share this post because this is really useful information, very practical information, because the truth is, as we're learning right now, we're living in the modern age. There are so many things around us that are creating a level of stress. Maybe the time we see our bills or so many notifications on Instagram, Facebook, uh, you know, people that we have to meet, people that demand our attention to emails and so many commitments that we have committed to uh, that our body is always in a state of parasympathetic, right? Uh, fight no. or flight mode. Fight or flight, sympathetic, yes. Sympathetic. Uh, yeah. So that's fight or flight. Yeah. And our body needs to go back into parasympathetic so that right. it, it realizes that there's no saber to tiger. We need a way to relax and Qigong in a beautiful manner allows us to tap into our breathing, our visualization and our body movement to guide us back into that wonderful state. So beautifully explained. Thanks a lot for sharing that with us an Action Tribe. Uh, please take note, please take action. Uh, so Anthony, can Qigong cure chronic immune disorders? Because I've you know, chatted and connected to so many members in our community. And I see a lot of people have these challenges, chronic immune disorders or challenges. Is there, yeah. is there a solution? Yes. So first of all, let me be very careful. In the Western world, you have to be very careful with the word cure. Certainly yeah. in, my, in my world, I mm. have to be careful. And I want to be careful too, because I think cure sends the wrong message. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, it oversimplifies and we don't need to. And I think sure. that we don't need to oversell something like Qigong. What we really want is a solution sure. or a really beautiful, elegant management of that. So for example, I'll use my example of depression. Am I cured of depression? I don't know. I, I used to think mm. I was, but I think that that was, a, I think I was, I don't think that was 
correct. And I don't think it was good for me to tell my students that. But here's the thing that's amazing. And, you know, it's good enough or it's still almost miraculous. The way that I manage my depression with Qigong is miraculous. It's like it's almost as good as a cure and it doesn't get us down those false paths. And it also helps us avoid legal issues. Um, so I want to be very careful in promising cure. But here's what I can promise. Yeah. Uh, Qigong can do amazing things because specifically, really one of the things that it does best is to supercharge your immune system. Now, I say supercharge because that's a good word in the West, but very often what, if we're talking about chronic immune disorders, what we're talking about is not just supercharging your immune system, but balancing it. So autoimmune is too much immunity sometimes. It's your body actually attacking yourself, right? So um, mm -hmm. yeah. your body is attacking itself or, not regulating the immune system correctly. So Qigong is all about the yin and yang of your body's natural systems. It's about balancing that stuff out. Do we have, first of all, is the immune system engaged in a healthy way? Can the antibodies get to where they need to go? Uh, are you producing the right antibodies? All this stuff, all this stuff, of course, happens invisibly and magically in our own bodies without us ourselves doing anything. But Qigong absolutely is amazing. And here's Here's the great thing about Qigong. If you do it, and this is the way I prefer to teach it, if you do it in a systematic way and in a modern way with, without any of the BS from, you know, some of the, th that gets thrown around in the world of Qigong and Tai Chi and meditation sometimes, just mm -hmm. focus on yourself, your healing, try to get good results. You'll get an answer, basically. You, if you, what I tell students is if you practice every day consistently or mostly every day consistently for, say, three months, it's not to say that all your problems are going to be gone, but you're going to see progress in multiple areas, and that's going to inspire mm. you to continue with your practice. And then you just keep going on. You, you sign a new contract. Right. I'm going to do three more months of Qigong. Keep going, keep going. But if you're asking me if I've had students mm. who've had results with chronic immune disorders, absolutely. Lots and lots of them of all different kinds. Some I can't even pronounce. Yeah. Um, and, and that's not because... Qigong is magic. It's because your your body's natural healing systems are magic. That's what's magic. Got it. Now, through your energy, your wonderful energy that you're sharing with us right now and sharing your story and the transformation that is available to everyone uh, in this lifetime, we've got some amazing questions and I hope you will be able to shed some light on them because Yvonne and Amina, these are our diehard action takers and Yvonne asks, can it help reduce someone who has seizures or is that psychogenic seizures? So basically she said, so if you could comment on that and then I'll move on to the next question after that. Okay, Ivan, when you say seizures, so I mean, psychogenic just means they're, uh, it's like uh, the modern word for psychosomatic, um, but these are legitimate seizures. They've been measured. It's some sort of epileptic seizure. Is it grand mal? What are we talking about here? So I can just get to the bottom of it. Um, and while we're waiting for her answer, I'll mention. So I get this question a lot. Um, it's insert, you know, th your condition, can Qigong help someone with, insert this, I actually have a whole blog post on this subject. And let me be very clear as we're waiting to answer Yvonne's question is that it, it doesn't matter what I say. I mean, the answer is yes, of course, Qigong can help with just about anything because uh, the body's ability to heal these things. First of all, you should do some research and find out, are there cases of spontaneous healing of whatever your condition is? you'll find that for many, many conditions, there are many, many documented cases. So in that case, you know that the body is sort of capable. So then the question is, is Qigong a good fit for you and are you gonna practice it? And here's what's really gonna answer your own question, your own experience. And I have thousands and thousands of students from all over the world who can honestly say from their own experience, Qigong helped me with this. And that's what I want. Like, it's, it's not what some guy on some show who said something interesting one day on a Saturday says to you. It's about you practicing, taking action, and proving to yourself that your body can heal, that Qigong is maybe a good fit for you, and that you can make, uh, make an impact on your own healing. That's what, that's what we're after here. Um, did we, sorry, I missed it if she gave an answer. Did she answer my question back to her? Well, she mentioned non-epileptic. Non-epileptic. Okay, so, so, so thanks for clarifying. So I, I like to get to the bottom of these things. I, I think it's important to clarify. Um, off the top of my head, yes, I have had students who had seizure, non-epileptic uh, epileptic seizures. I don't remember them using the term psychogenetic, but that may just be my memory there. Um, and 
if I remember correctly, yes, they definitely saw results. Now, as you know, both epileptic and non-epileptic seizures are complicated. And even the best scientists, you know, even the Mayo Clinic doesn't, they don't fully understand that they have different things that they would use to treat it, but it's not something that's clearly understood, nor is the mechanism understood. Here's my thing with Qigong. I think you absolutely need to try Qigong because it is perfect for situations like this where a lot of my students come to me, like we talked about earlier, they come in desperation, they come having tried many, many different things, they come having gone to the Mayo Clinic, having tried other types of, of healing, and you know they still aren't any clearer on what, what exactly the problem is or what the solution is, and they add Qigong to it. And I'm not gonna say Qigong is always the perfect fit, but I tell you one thing, Students who practice Qigong regularly, it sets them on a new path and helps them to get the, towards the, maybe the combination of things that they need for the healing that they need. So for me, for you, your situation, Qigong is a no brainer. You need it. Like you need to start practicing Qigong. If not for me, find a teacher that you resonate with. You can try my stuff to get started and then find a teacher that works for you. But I wanna see you do three months, six months, nine months, a year of Qigong and then answer the question yourself. I think there's there's no question in my mind that if you practice some good Qigong for a, a good period of time, you're going to come back and you're going to say, it definitely helped. You know, it helped in these. It's not to say that the problem is completely gone, but it definitely helped. And I'm going to con continue do doing it. I'm sold on Qigong and I'm going to do it for the rest of my life. This is how a lot of my students talk. So there you go, Action Tribe, especially if you are listening to our audio version of our podcast, remember that we these days do a live stream, we record it live for the live audience. If you join our Facebook uh, Facebook page, then you'll be able to partake in this experience and ask questions. We can't answer all questions, but we will try to feature as many questions as possible. Go to our Facebook page, hit like so that you get reminders as soon as we go live on Saturdays. Uh, now, Anthony, these days you're on an adventure, right? On an RV and you're traveling across the country. So talk yeah. to us about your journey and how has it been so far? Because I see your photos from time to time. They look amazing. Yeah. They look spectacular. Yeah. So talk to us about it. Yeah. So I'm entering a new phase of my life. I'm actually broadcasting from the top of a mountain <laughs> in, in a campground. I'll see if I can give you a little bit of the view. Um, so about a month ago, I set out on a journey in an RV, which for those who don't know, I don't know if it's going to be, it's hard to see out there. I but can see it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's misty today. Um, so I'm in an RV, which is a rec recreational vehicle. It's basically a home on wheels. For many years in Florida, I had a brick and mortar Qigong studio for 10 years, basically. I closed that a couple of years ago as I started moving online. I started teaching online and reaching more and more people from different countries and all over the country and all over the world. And now I'm in, so I closed my studio and I just started to teach online and on retreats. And now it's even further, the next step after that, which is I'm teaching online and I'm also traveling around, spending time in these beautiful places because Qigong is really meant to be done outside. Yeah. And I'm also meeting people. I'm meeting my students all around the country. I'm specifically, one of my goals is to take beautiful sh images and videos of Qigong in these amazing spaces, if you check out my Instagram channel, for example, uh, you'll see me starting to do more and more of this because I think it's really important to get the message because we, we respond visually. Like if you see an image of me or my students doing Qigong in these beautiful spaces, it's the kind of thing that sort of inspires you to look a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. And I'm on a mission to, to reach more people and to inspire people to fall in love with qigong the way i did so that's kind of what my crazy life is i'm kind of a monk now on the on the road i live in i'm in a you know very small space i live in yeah. 82 square feet but i yeah. love it it gets me outside it gets me meeting some interesting people and we'll see we'll see where my path takes me well two things firstly you are really inspiring me to start a you know, nomadic lifestyle and maybe just, uh, you know, rent an RV and go across Canada or even the United States, because that's what I've been wanting to do for the longest time. And our community is like, AJ, just go do it. So firstly, I want to set a determination that I want to get there sometime in the near future. Uh, 
and I forgot about number two, but it's gonna, <laughs> it's it's gonna come back. But that's the main thing. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's 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 great to be able to do what you want to do and follow your purpose and connect with people all around the world. But at the same time, connect with nature and be yeah. out in nature and really enjoy what it has to offer. The number two thing was if you ever write a book about your journey, then remember that we have our platform available for you, and I'm happy to share your book in your story when you do release it. So remember that. Uh, what is the most uh, difficult part of your current lifestyle and maybe what's the best part? Uh, so the new lifestyle is, first of all, minimizing. I mean, this this will help you as well. Uh, I spent a couple months downsizing. You know, I'm 46 okay. years old, downsizing 46 years into an 82 square foot van yeah. was a huge challenge. And it was it was really challenging, um, but it's totally worth it. You know, you hear a lot about minimalism and yeah. tidying up and all these things. I think they all come together into sort of a Zen lifestyle and right. I'm so glad I did it. It was incredibly challenging to throw stuff out and to find the stuff that I'll use in the van. But now that I'm here, now that I'm on the road, there is something to it. You know, like Thoreau said when he, you know, Walden Pond and simplify, simplify, simplify. There is something to it. It was totally worth it. It was hard to simplify, to throw stuff out, to sell stuff, yeah. to commit to living into a van, but it was absolutely worth it. I find that if I can use a computer computer analogy, it's almost as if I've closed all these windows or these browsers yeah. in my mind. Like they've been open for years. All this yeah. stuff, all these clothes that I never wore, all these things that I don't even, what is this crap? <laughs> now it's gone. I donated it or sold it or just threw it away. Yeah. And I find that there's more bandwidth in my mind right. for connecting with people and connecting with nature. And it's really... It's a beautiful thing. You've probably heard this. You've watched Netflix shows on minimalism or yeah. tidying up or things like that. But really experience it. You can start to – you can – I'm talking to you, AJ, but also your yeah, listeners. Yeah. Yeah. You can start somehow by minimizing. You don't have to be as crazy as I am and move into a mobile – I'm like in a mobile hermit hut here. But um, you can do something. Start minimizing and simplifying your life. Life in the 21st century is crazy. And you will be happier and I think healthier as a result if you can do it. Wonderful, wonderful. And so you are practicing non-attachment. And that is the truth, especially when we let go of stuff that no longer serves us, right? We're able yeah. to, like you mentioned, close down the windows that have been uh, consuming our bandwidth for so many months, years, even. Uh, but what does Qigong teach us about running a business? Because I'm, uh, you know, I'm curious, I'm fascinated <laughs> by the way you run things, right? So do you apply the principles of Qigong for your business success as well? Yeah, absolutely. There's it's funny, I had uh, dinner last night with some fellow entrepreneurs who I've met, yeah. you know, in some of my conferences and stuff. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm a small business owner. I have been for 15 years, whether it's been yeah. brick and mortar or online now. And it's a, been a very challenging life. I mean, if I hadn't been so determined with my mission to mm -hmm. share Qigong with the world, I would have given up long ago because it's been such a challenge. And right. I think also, not only is Qigong a challenging business to be in, because I'm really it's a it's a weird word it's a thing some people haven't heard of and i'm asking yeah. people to really participate but if i didn't have the energy yeah and the stress reduction in fact a lot of my entrepreneur friends are asking me to teach a qigong course for entrepreneurs because we desperately need it you know these small business and yeah. really small business like like you and me people who have less than 10 employees way less mm -hmm. than 10 employees mm -hmm. um we are the backbone of the economy in many ways. We are the people that are out, out in the trenches really doing the work. Um, and we desperately need help. I see so many entrepreneurs who burn out. They don't have stress reduction that works or they don't have the habits. For example, yeah. maybe they've done some yoga or something, but they're not actively doing it. They don't have the habits that we've talked about. Right. So for me, thank God I already had this habit of Qigong because I don't, I, I wouldn't be helping people today if I hadn't be, been practicing what I preach and using Qigong along the way to reduce my stress, um, caused specifically, I mean, stress in life, but caused specifically by entrepreneurship, working 60, I worked 60 hours a week for many, many years just to get yeah. my business off the ground. Now I've lowered it down. I only work 40 hours a week. That's it. Got it, got it. That's really, really useful. And you mentioned, I, you know, I observed you said uh, Qigong, can be a difficult word right especially for some yes. communities people are not used to it i've got chakras <laughs> so, yes. so that's also oh, yeah. 
like a hard word, right? So yeah. I, I think similar similar grounds. Uh, but yeah, it's really inspiring to be able to really believe in your practice and, and, and practice it yourself and also help small business owners and entrepreneurs and, and people who want to make a change in their lives to reduce stress. But not only that, go beyond that and tap into flow so that they're not working 60 hours or 70 hours a week, but they're able to do, be and feel much more and make yeah. a larger impact. So thanks a lot for sharing. Now, uh, Anthony, is there, a, is there a quick flow or a technique that you can teach us today? You know, it's funny. I was thinking about this and how we would do this. I, I actually think it's, I'm going to say no, because I think it's better if they just go and learn it. So first of all, it's difficult with the cameras. It's hard right. for me to get far enough away from sure. the camera to teach you something. Yep. Second of all, I would rather you have your first experience of Qigong to be really systematic. So I've got some materials on my website that'll teach you very, very systematic in the best way and uh, give you a positive. If you've never done Qigong, here's what I, what I really am big on. I want people's first experience with Qigong to be very, very positive. And unfortunately, that's not always the case. There are some poor teachers out there, some people who have very crazy ideas about Qigong. So I would prefer, I'm happy to teach you for free on my website, um, but I will, teach, I will teach you something. But in terms of the dynamic moves, um, I, which is a big part of Qigong, I would prefer you go to my website and get one of the freebies there. But I will teach you a big secret. This would be an example of one of the things that um, was kept a secret in the Qigong tradition and now I no longer keep it a secret. I teach it to my beginning students. How much time do we have actually? Um, we have um, at least 15 minutes. I mean, we can go okay. more. It really depends okay. on your... <laughs> so let's, let's do it. You can do it with me and everybody else can do it. Whether you're sitting or standing, just sit upright. And don't, it doesn't have to be straight, like super straight. Just sit upright so that you're not leaning back on something. Unless you have to lean back, in which case it's fine. Obviously, there's no choice. Sit upright. You can also stand. Gently close your eyes or close them halfway. So you can either close them all the way or half closed. And the reason we typically close the eyes is so that we can focus on the internal experience, which is very, very important in Qigong. If you need to open your eyes, that's also okay. Don't worry. You can open the eyes at any time, but generally we're less distracted with the eyes closed. So close the eyes or half close the eyes and just listen to me instead of watching, to me, watching me. And I want you to relax your body as much as you can. Now that's not easy, and you do need training to relax your body, something that I teach you. But here's a nice little trick. I want you to tune into your whole body, relax, and then I want you to relax everything twice as much, just like that, just twice as much. You let go of everything and relax everything twice as much. And then there's an additional trick that really helps. This is a very important trick to help relax your nervous system. As you relax everything twice as much, we'll do it again in a second, I want you to breathe out with a sound like this. I want you to actually make that kind of sound. All of us, perfect. Just like AJ did. I want you to make that sound as you relax your body twice as much with your eyes half closed or gently closed. Let's try it together. And it's okay. You feel a little ridiculous. That's fine. But by relaxing the jaw, you're relaxing your vagus nerve. And by vocalizing that sound, you're releasing some of your stress. Let's try it one more time. Relaxing everything twice as much. <sighs> Good. If you can, keep the jaw relaxed and the mouth gently open. You'll close your mouth every once in a while to swallow your saliva, but then open the mouth again, relax the jaw, keep that vagus nerve relaxed, and that will help to relax your nervous system. And then, very simply, you're just relaxed, your eyes are closed, your mouth is gently open, hopefully. You're nice and relaxed. And then... Smile from your heart. This is a one secret technique. And don't worry about the exact details. What does that mean? How do I smile from my heart? Do I smile with my face? Don't worry about this stuff. It's an energetic thing. I want you to smile from your heart. Feel your inner smile and feel it blossoming out as best as you can. It won't be easy, especially if you're like me and you battle depression. So. It'll be challenging, but you can do it. I know from experience that you can do it. You could just smile from the heart and open up the heart energy, the energy of the heart meridian. You don't need to know where it is or even what it is or how it relates to chakras. Your heart energy is something that you can tap into and you can loosen it up, relax it, and allow it to flow a little bit. It's safe, it's okay to do, and it's good for you and it's natural. It's your birthright in many ways. So just 10 seconds of that. Let's just try it. 
eyes closed, jaw relaxed, nice and relaxed, and smiling from the heart. You can breathe spontaneously however you like. Good. And what you tune into as you practice, this is a technique, it's an invisible technique, smiling from the heart. What you tune into is a shift in your internal energy. Eventually, or actually I bet many of you can already feel it, but with practice, for those of you who are new, you'll feel a very subtle shift in your ner nervous system and your energy. And here is where we start practicing Qigong. We're already doing Qigong, but most people, when they think of Qigong, they think of something moving. Mm -hmm. Like what I'm doing right now is called pushing mountains, some sort of movement like that. That's a beautiful technique. I'm happy to teach it to you. But those movements aren't gonna get you the results that you want unless you get into this state that we're in right now. And this state is called smiling from the heart or sometimes we call it flowing stillness. We're in a, a bit of stillness, but we're flowing. We're nice and relaxed, you're not rigid. And this is a beautiful state, something that you can do any time of the day. And then, well, how do we come back? We're in a nice state, how do we come back? Very simply, just rub your hands a little bit. Warm your eyes for a little bit like this. Just hold your palms over your eyes like this. And then just gently pat and blink the eyes open. That's it. Pat and blink the eyes open. Pat, 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 pat. Now the eyes are open again. We've just finished patting. And then we could just sort of wash the face a little bit. And we're back. So you can do this technique throughout the day. Now, I've given you a very um, specific taste of Qigong. I want you to understand that Qigong is dynamic. There are movements, there's beautiful things that you can do and you can learn those on my website. I'm happy to teach them to you. But the reason why I teach this kind of stuff first is because I want you to focus on what happens on the inside. Too many people in the Qigong world and also Tai Chi world, they focus on the external movements of Tai Chi and Qigong and nothing else. Those movements are beautiful, but that's not what that, if I had done that, and this is why I'm so, so keen on this because it's my mission. If I had done that, if I had gotten distracted with the external movements of Qigong and Tai Chi, I might be dead. So it's very important for me to share this message that the important stuff in Qigong happens on the inside. You got a glimpse of that just there, but you can also of course go learn the external stuff. Um, that's sort of the easy part to teach the external movements. It's the internal stuff that's difficult. And I hope I just gave you a tiny glimpse of what that's about there. So Action Tribe, to access the show notes, this is for the audio listeners of our podcast. To access the show notes, visit my 7 forward slash 280. That's my 7 is a word, my 7 chakras.com forward slash 280. Think of the circular path of each movement. In Tai Chi, every movement is in a curve or circle that has no ending or no beginning. Now, this is a profound quote by Paul Lam, because sometimes when you're going through a difficulty or a difficult time or you're experiencing a major life crisis, which is totally possible, it might feel like things are coming to an end or that you won't be able to go through this but if you apply the techniques and principles of qigong to your life then you would realize that every moment including your life the one who's listening and watching right now your life is a circle every organism is going through a season every experience is here to teach you something new that will be of help to you in the future every obstacle is actually a stepping stone to a higher ground in life and every perceived ending is actually the preparation for a brand new awakening, a beginning. So don't lose hope. Instead, ask the universe, what is this moment trying to teach me or share with me? And who do I have to become to embark on this new chapter of my life? So Anthony, talk to us about a time in your life when you had experienced a major life challenge or difficulty. How did you go through it? And then what steps did you take to sort of come out of it? So it's funny, I often, for years, I've been talking about my original challenges, which was my, I talked about a little bit, my depression, my back pain, but what I'm now writing and I'm, I'm writing a book and I'm talking more about it openly. I'm a little bit more um, ready to share this stuff. But the last five years of my life have actually been incredibly challenging. I've been through challenge after big challenges um, from leaving my teacher of 17 years over a sexual abuse scandal, which was awful and terrible. And I stood with the victims and still do to uh, just my grandmother dying, to some health problems, to a repeat with depression, to problems with my business. It was like, I, mm -hmm. I really felt like, you know, just 
Job in the Bible, you know, just one challenge after another, like God is challenging me. It's been pretty much five years of that. And uh, it's funny. I don't, I mean, people say, so are you coming out of it? I don't know if I'm coming out of it or if I just have a stronger back, but it was mm. kind of another test for me as somebody who's been practicing Qigong for many, many years. I've helped many, many people, but it was almost as if I was being put to a graduation test or a mastery test because uh, mm. I feel like what was happening was challenging me to say, okay, well, you did it once before, but can you do it again? For example, I injured my back uh, two years ago and went through some, some serious back pain and the universe was kind of saying, can you do it again? Can you heal? And it's even harder now. The stakes are higher. There's even right. more stress. Can you do it? And I can say it again with confidence, if not for Qigong and also Tai Chi. I practice Tai Chi, of course, as well. If not for Qigong, I think I would be dead again. And certainly mm. I would not be thriving. Like, you know, I'm helping more and more people. My business is healthy. I'm healthy. Uh, and I, I would have succumbed to one of those challenges. Uh, you name it. Like, uh, even my grandmother dying, I was close to her. It, there was nothing wrong with the death. She was 102 years old. You know, she was an amazing person. But the grief of it really hit me hard. It was so close to her that, I, I don't know, it just it hit me hard. But Qigong is this constant companion for me. And it's something that I turn to on a daily basis. When the going gets tough, I do Qigong. And it's so reassuring to know that even when things get tougher, I can honestly say that things the past year, I faced some of the most difficult challenges of my life, tougher than I thought I, you know, ever before. And I came through it. Like, you know, like I slew that dragon and I, you know, it's not like some magical technique or, I mean, I do lots of different Qigong techniques. I've deepened my practice over years and years and years, but really what it did for me, it was the consistent practice of Qigong, always turning back to Qigong. Something terrible happens, I turn back to Qigong. You know, I feel like crap, I turn to Qigong. And that constant companion of Qigong has saved my life once again. And I'm so, so grateful for it. And my, my commitment to sharing this art is stronger than ever. So based on what you just shared, based on your story and your current life circumstance right now, in just one sentence, what is it one major life lesson that you'd like to share with our viewers and listeners right now? I, I don't know who said this, but it's a great quote, uh, which I think will help a lot of us is um, ask not for a lighter load, ask for a stronger back. Right. So and this is a very important. This is what Qigong does. I mean, physically, yes, it can give you physical strength as well. There's lots of Qigong exercises for building physical strength, but it's metaphoric. We are asking, you know, the, the universe probably is not going to give you a lighter load. That's not how mm. it works. My load is no lighter than it was 20 years ago. What's different is I'm stronger. I'm more resilient than I ever knew was possible. And I really credit Qigong as a large part of that, that Qigong has helped me to be a better version of myself, to be stronger than I ever. I did not know I was this strong. And I say that as somebody who even 10 years ago had already been teaching for a long time ago. I've right. been teaching for a long time. 10 years ago, I would have said, I'm strong, I'm stronger than ever. And now I can say it again, I'm stronger than I ever knew was possible. And I think that's the secret there is I, I have a stronger back, not a lighter load. Wonderful. That is a powerful message for all our viewers and listeners who are listening right now. We've got a large listenership today. Make sure that you share this post. Make sure you give us a heart, give us a like, because the truth is that we depend on you to share this powerful message because there are so many people who could benefit from the not just the literal wisdom of Qigong, the practices, but the philosophical wisdom of Qigong to be resilient, to not give up, to, you know, stand up for what you truly believe in. And that is powerful. So make sure you share this post. If you're watching live Action Tribe, I hope you enjoyed today's session and you've upgraded your knowledge about the energy arts. Before we move on, let me ask you, how much do you listen to your inner voice? Do you really pay attention to what your intuition is telling you? And most importantly, do you act? in accordance with your inner wisdom, because especially of late, I've realized that when we depend only on our conscious mind, we have limited potential, right? But the moment that we let go and we surrender to the Tao, to the universe, to the Brahman, we allow ourselves to be pulled by the nudges of our intuition and our higher self. We suddenly tap into an invisible force that we never knew existed, but always was there. Because remember, you have it within you 
just listen to your inner voice because you already you already have the answers the guru is already within you because like shakti gawain the author of creative visualization once put notice what happens when you follow your intuitive feelings the result is usually increased power increased energy and a sense of things flowing so we are now at our wisdom round anthony uh, are you ready sure Let's so what it. is the what is the best piece of advice that you have ever received it was actually from my my first karate teacher which is funny because this is so long ago now but she taught me to take the good and discard the bad and as i've navigated the world of qigong and tai chi it's been so useful you know don't don't expect one teacher to have every answer take the good from that teacher there's bad stuff there um, discard that move on continue to take the good and discard the bad Got it. So if you could turn back time and uh, spend one hour with somebody who is currently living or maybe dead, who would it be? I mean, for me, that's definitely I would go back and meet Bodhidharma, who is the inspiration for uh, me arriving in Qigong. He's the first patriarch of Zen Buddhism. He's the first patriarch of Shaolin uh, Qigong. And many people credit him as the first patriarch of Shaolin Kung Fu as well. He's just this incredible figure. And I just would love to have a beer with a guy. Wonderful. I'd also love to meet Bodhidharma. <laughs> maybe three of us could do some Qigong yeah, yeah. somewhere in Kathmandu or maybe even in uh, Magadha, yeah. <laughs> you know, the ancient yeah. empire. Yeah. So what is one thing that you do in the morning or maybe in the evening before sleeping that has improved the quality of your life? Well, for me, it's Qigong. I do Qigong every morning and every evening. And that's what I help my students to do as well. That's uh, I encourage my students first and foremost to do once a day, whether that's in the morning or the evening. And then yeah. if they can and they're ambitious and they really want to heal, then we do about 15 minutes in the morning and about 15 minutes in the evening. And of course, you can do more as you get more advanced. But I practice Qigong pretty much every morning and every evening. And it's it's the number one thing that's changed my life. Got it. So our listeners and Action Tribe members love book recommendations. So if you could recommend one book for our listeners and viewers, what would it be? Yeah, so it's tricky because people want a Qigong book. And unfortunately, I'm, I'm still in the process of writing what I would think is a modern Qigong book. Here, here's what I recommend. Rather than recommending one book, which I think is problematic, um, I recommend you take my advice from earlier, take the good and discard the bad. Find a couple Qigong, Qigong books. There are many out there. Um, when I was looking, I just bought, I bought five or six and read them all. Um, read a couple and see what resonates with you. Take the good and discard the bad and don't get locked into one system. I think it's a mistake in the Qigong world. So if I were to recommend one book, you could just get stuck down that path without realizing what else is out there. So mm -hmm. I think my best advice is buy at least three books on Qigong. You don't have to read them book, you know, cover to cover, but see what there is, read a little bit and get a feel for it and then decide again, decide a new path in Qigong, which way you want to go. And then maybe at some point, my, I, my book will actually teach some of this. You were talking about your inner master before. It's a big part of my teaching is not just getting students to follow what I do. There's this great quote, you know, I'm sure you know, it's like, seek not to follow in the footsteps of the, the masters of old, seek what they sought. And a lot mm -hmm. of what I do is I teach students to seek what I sought and what the past masters have sought. That will be in my book. But until then, buy a couple books, learn about this Qigong thing, get an overview for all the different types, different ideas about Qigong, and then make your next decision after that. Got it, got it. So Action Tribe, would you like to receive one book for free? Because audible.com is offering Action Tribe one free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial so that you can get to check out the amazing range of books that they have, and they do have many books on Qigong. Yeah, sure. Because the truth is listening is the true is the new reading, and the fact that you are listening and watching this right now proves my point. And I definitely love listening to my Audible books every single day because they are convenient. All the books go in my phone, and the fact that somebody or maybe the author is reading them out to me makes it amazing. So to try out your first audiobook today, go to my 7 forward slash free book. Once again, my 7 forward slash free book and start listening to your next book on Qigong. So Anthony, thank you so much for connecting with us today and sharing your story and talking so much about Qigong and the, and the profound benefits of this practice. Before you go, tell us one thing that you are grateful for and how we can find you online. 
So gratitude is actually something I practice every day. I can't say one thing because I literally wake up every morning and I start practicing gratitude for things, people, opportunities. I'm grateful every day for Qigong. I'm grateful for being on this mountain today with this beautiful view that's a little hard to see right now. I'm grateful for this interview. I think gra gratitude is one of the great secrets of life and you should practice it. Really practice it. People say, oh, I practice gratitude. It's like, really? Do you practice it every day? <laughs> Or do you just think about it every once in a while? I actually practice it all day long, every day, and it's a beautiful thing. Um, so if you want to learn more from me, I offer a tremendous amount of stuff for free. I recommend, oh, that's another thing you could do, in, you know, buy a book, but you can check out my blog, which my blog is by now, I've been blogging for since 2010, and it's basically three books worth of material for free. Uh, so check it out. My website is flowingzen.com. That's F as in Frank. L O W I N G Z E N dot com. So flow, like we flow, and Zen, like the meditation. So flowing Zen dot com. And really just click the start here button. There's that's the simplest way to start. I've got a whole button for this. You can read about my stuff. You can check out my blog. You can check out my most popular blog posts. And I do have a lot of free materials, including free courses. So you can start getting the hang of what I'm talking about. You can get your mind wrapped around what is Qigong and you can start learning. If I'm not the teacher for you, if you want something different, <clears throat> for example, if you want a female teacher, that's totally fine. Well, I have a lot of instructors who have certified who are female. Whatever the reason is, I, I, I would love to teach you. I would be honored to teach you. But if I'm not the teacher for you, I encourage you to find the teacher that you resonate with, at least for the time being. Uh, if I am the teacher for you, I'm happy to guide you and to help you through the world of Qigong, just go to flowingzen.com. You can also, of course, find me on Facebook. I'm on Instagram now. I'm on Twitter. I'm just sort of everywhere. You can find me. If you Google flowingzen.com, you should have no problem finding me and getting your free stuff and getting started in the amazing world of Qigong. Got it. Thanks a lot for sharing. Amina says, gratitude, gratitude, gratitude every day. Action yes. Tribe, if you have listened so far, it means that you've really enjoyed today's episode and I'm grateful for you. If you've experienced a shift, you've learned something new, you feel better, then please support our podcast. I've created a donate button recently and you can donate whatever you like, $7.77. Or if you're a long time listener, 777. Choose your lucky number because what you put into the universe always comes back to you multiple times over and we need your support. The link you need is my 7 forward slash support. That's my 7 forward slash support and support us. Connect with me on Instagram. Uh, I'm at, at my 7 chakras. That, that's at my 7 is a word, my 7 chakras. Or write me an email. Give me your feedback. Send me your thoughts. Let me know what you liked. Um, did you enjoy this episode? I will pass on the message as well to Anthony. If you've learned something new, the experience has shift internally. My email is aj at my 7 chakras.com. That's aj at my 7 chakras.com. And Anthony, I think somebody asked for your email address as well. Is that something that you share? Sure, sure. Just Anthony at flowingzen.com. Awesome. So <laughs> make sure that you send an email to him as well. Anthony, thank you so much for uh, you know coming on our show, talking to us about uh, Qigong and your story and being so vulnerable about your challenges and the difficulties that you went through and realizing that there is a solution. There's a hope. There's a faith for each and everyone out there who's going through a difficulty, going through a challenge, because remember, no matter what challenge you're going through, what you do have is your story. And what your story will really transform, not just your life, but the life of others around you. So hang in there. We need you. Uh, and also, to Anthony, thank you for taking us one step closer to a human revolution. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everyone. We are going to end this broadcast right now. Appreciate it. Share this episode. <laughs>